Hello everyone, I am Freddy here, and welcome to today's episode where I'm going to be reviewing the Gillard 42 XN7568, or Gillard 42 for short, while also providing you the ideal god roll for you to go ahead and go grind for. The Gillard 42 is a legendary 600 RPM AR that can be only gotten by a world drop from the Roman Forge bosses, and also has a chance of dropping from most select forges. Based on the year 1 variant, this version now comes with the ability to have RNG rolls and provide a large number of different perk variations that the user can go ahead and try to grind for. It's both a nimble and fast weapon to use, and generally used as a bullet hose and can wipe out groups of players if caught off guard. And from what you see from my clips, with Rampage or Kill Clip attached, this weapon can be very difficult to face against, and would be generally pure maddening to face while in, in its continuous firing state. Although sadly, you won't see a lot of action with this weapon because of today's meta and its TDK, which is something we'll look a bit more in depth over. For now, let's first take a look at what we're dealing with. Impact 21, range 41, stability 49, handling 55, reload speed 46, aim assist 60, recoil direction 70 and zoom 16, and then it has a magazine of 44. From the weapon stat, they all seem to bolster quite positively for the weapon and the weapon category, with its handling, stability, reload speed and aim assist and recoil direction all being above the needed area for it to be effective. As it's a 600 RPM AR, it will suffer from a lot of recoil kick and control for the user's end, which can be a problem for controlling if up against someone that has high caliber rounds active or explosive rounds. Generally, anything that will cause the user's recoil control to bounce and negate their shots. Luckily, the weapon has a recoil direction of 70, which will place it in a vertical line upon being fired, so you have a better chance of landing your shots where you need to be, but at the same time, its stability is at 49, which is a tinkering at above the manageable level for the weapon and most weapons in general for ease of stability and overall control. This isn't much of a problem from what I've experienced, as the stability stat is in a okay area, which only needs a plus 1 to put over the needed buff. Except from that, the weapon still plays well with both the recoil direction and stability where they are, but if we can get a steady round perk on the weapon for example, then it will feel a lot more accurate and perhaps laser like for a 600 RPM of course. Its handling is already in a good area that doesn't need any further buffs as well with its reload speed and aim assist all being positively in the no more improvements area, although we could add in an increase for our aim assist and reload speed for fast engagements and use the weapon as a sort of SMG. But why would you do that when you could literally get an SMG of the same RPM to do the very same thing that you want? Now, on the downside of the weapon, its impact and range stat are quite poor, which is understandable when you look at what type of weapon this is, which is a bigger version of the 900 RPM SMGs, with varied to better stats. Its impact of 21 is tied down to its 600 RPM design, so we can't increase our impact by any means, but we can increase our TDK to make it more effective in the Crucible. As it stands, it does 21 to crit and 13 to body and has a TDK of 0.90, which means it only needs 8 crits and 2 body shots to kill. This is around average for the weapon type and is quite fair considering its RPM will affect how well you can land your shots, and to be honest, landing 8 crits and 2 bodies isn't hard, but it's not something that will always be guaranteed as you will be fighting back against your recoil control. If we are to be a bit more realistic, I would say you would at least land 2-3 to three crits on a player and then focus on the body to finish, since the recoil direction spread is a lot more controllable when you're not aiming at a small area, and the chest area is a lot more easier and a larger target. If we were to just land body shots, it would require 15 shots to kill. Not bad for the weapon type, however it will push our TDK to 1.40, which is a 0.50 increase. Now, in this situation, most players will be able to either get away from us, or be able to fight back and trade in kills, but this all varies in the type of engagement you get yourself into. To further improve on the TTK, we can use perks like Kill Clipped or Rampage to lower TTK to make it a bit more effective and reduce the time to kill to take out most players. As you can see on the screen, this is how it affects weapons TTK overall. Kill Clip is 0.60, Rampage 1 is 0.80, Rampage 2 is 0.70, and Rampage 3 is 0.60. With Kill Clip added, it takes us from a 0.90 to a 0.60 TTK and only needing 7 crits to kill or 12 body shots to kill in the Crucible, which sounds a lot more better than what we had before. The same can be said for Rampage where we can actively see it decrease upon each step it reaches. So Rampage 3 with a 600 RPM AR with a magazine increase would allow you to pretty much take on and dominate most meta weapons. 
Its range as well as around 41 which suits it best for close to mid range engagements but we can increase it to allow us to reach further targets and for the damage drop off to kick in much later. Personally it's a 30 50 area, I would say if you can get this weapon as stable as you can then you can then go ahead and improve on the range. But if you can't, don't worry about it, it's best off to focus on trying to increase your stability to make shots more accurate before focusing on the range, even though range is more of the important stat for most weapons. Now thankfully there's a number of parts we can look out for to make it a bit more viable in today's meta. So masterwork, within the masterwork section there are only 3 key areas we can focus on that can all benefit the weapon. We can go with more stability via plus 10 to push our stability from 49 to 59 which pairs with our recoil direction and will make this weapon very stable within its effective range of 5 to 30 plus meters. We then have range which we can push to 51 instead which can benefit by extending our range drop off damage by a tad more on the aim assist as well which can also allow our shots to be a lot more stickier if we manage to push our stability to above 50 as well. We then have range which we can push to 51 instead which can benefit by extending our range drop off damage by a tad more and the aim assist as well which can allow our shots to be a lot more stickier. And if we manage to push our stability to above 50 as well, we'll have a more solid experience of using it. Lastly we have reload speed at 44 currently, but with a master work reload provided, we can push that to 54 which can help with reloading in a much faster pinch. Now top priority should be stability first to reduce the kick and allow easier controllability on your end. Unless you get a stability perk elsewhere, then I would recommend range instead, so you can hit further and your damage drop off is slightly extended. Reload is more or less a last choice as where it is, it doesn't really need a much a substantial boost. For the mods, there's not really a lot to pick out, so you're free to pick and choose what you like, best for the weapon. However, I would recommend you don't add a counterbalance mod as weapon's verticality is perfect where it is, so scrap that perk but use any other mod that you choose. For the scopes, we are given 9 to choose from, with all 3 covering small, medium and long range engagements. They all focus on range, handling and zoom increases, so in our case, us increasing our range which is a weakness is going to be the very first thing to improve on thankfully. So what we should look out for are SBO20 front which provides a plus 7 in range, plus 10 in handling and a plus 2 in zoom, also offers us a nice field of view and red dot for easier aiming. SPO28 front which offers us a plus 11 in range, plus 5 in handling and a plus 3 in zoom. And a cross between SLO10 post and SLO21 post sites with increasements in range and handling but nothing in zoom. The main reason we are going with these scopes are because of the field of view for the users and not just the increasement in range and handling and zoom. The weapon is already quite adaptive in its stats with a few needed enhancements here and there. But the scopes that the weapon can roll with tend to be in my opinion mess up the overall feel for the weapon. The long range scopes are only ideal if we get this weapon stability to above 50 to ideally 60 plus, as high RPMs with long range scopes don't really meld well with each other. The projector sights with their clear fog and short zooms are great for allowing users to be fully aware of their surroundings, but I feel like the lack of rectile sights can also mess up with some of you landing your shots. The red dot sights seem to be the best in terms of providing the enhancements we need, clear field of view and a stationary rectile sight which fits the weapon as a whole perfectly. Of course this is all subject to change depending on your experience with scopes but it gives you an idea into what you might be best for you. In perk column 2 there are 6 perks to pick and only 3 to choose from so I'll keep this nice and short. Armour piercing round increases our range by plus 5 and also allows us to have our shots to pierce through others but at a reduced damage. Handy for a weapon with its large magazine and reserve count as we can use this to quickly weaken others and allow our teammates to finish a second opponent or allow us to finish. High caliber rounds provides a slight buff in range by plus 5 and also knock back opponents with low recoil direction. As we have 44 in the magazine, this is a great perk to fire down upon players that have low recoil direction on their weapons, as they won't be able to fight back against a stream of high caliber rounds. Ricochet rounds provides a boost in stability by plus 10 and a range by plus 5. However, Ricochet Round is a very odd perk as it has a hidden zoom buff that actually helps with damage drop off from further distances. So although something like Acroid Round has a higher range stat for Ricochet Rounds, it's actually much better to go with Ricochet Rounds because of the extra buff it provides. Do you remember, this perk and range stat will be adjusted once Shadow Keep comes, and depending on how bad it affects the weapon as a whole, 
it may or may not be a worthwhile perk to actually pick and use. We do have Light Mag as well as a runner up for benefiting us in range and reload speed, Alloy Mag which is handy if you're going to be using up your full magazine, and Extended Mag for boosting magazine size which can pair well with Fur Increase by a magazine increase mod. Perk Column 3, now in this column we have the following to look out for, which again isn't a lot. Tap the trigger for initial brief boost in stability and accuracy, which is really brief, but can be helpful for landing the first few critical hits and then followed by body shots. Snapshot Sights, which provides an increase in handling speed, which to be honest is handy for all weapons in the game. Under Pressure, which improves accuracy and stability as the magazine gets lower. This is one of those perks that really does benefit a high magazine and fast find AR by a lot, and is definitely a must have for a god roll for a 600 RPM. It can also pair well with high impact reserves, which provide a small boost in damage, which, when combined with a boost in accuracy and stability as the weapon gets lower, is actually a match made in heaven. Dynamic sway reduction boosts our accuracy over time the longer we fire, which is handy for tightening our weapons upon recoil kick. Handy for 600 RPM as we can aim towards the body at first and then finish via crit so like under pressure, we can combine this with high impact reserves to get a nice bit of synchronizations going. Now what's left over is quick draw which can allow us to draw our weapon incredibly fast but in our case isn't really that needed but still good. Auto load and holster just like quick draw which is good but really not needed as well and Outlaw. Now, it's a 50-50 as it only procs on precision kills and unless you can land precision hits via a 600 RPM AR all the time, or most of the time, then it's best if you avoid this perk for now unless you're very confident and very accurate in your shots. Perk on the form. Now, in this column is more or less your final choice to pair with whatever perks on your weapons, but I would say only two of the perks here are actually beneficial for the weapon overall. Kill Clip and Rampage are both helpful for all weapons and I won't really go into detail as to why as I already explained in the beginning part as to generally what they provide for the weapon and how it benefits overall. Rangefinder is another product that is both beneficial and helpful for extending our zoom magnification and range by a substantial amount. Pairing this with Dynamic Wave Reduction, Long Range Scope and a decent amount of stability can allow you to full alter at much further distances than it really should allow for 600 RPM. But whether that will be successful is uh, another thing. High impact rounds, like I said before, if you pair this with dynamic sway reduction or under pressure, you can get a very nice bit of synchronization going, but it's not the best in terms of increasing our TTK by a lot, but it still works. Moving target increases our movement speed and target acquisitions while moving, so for us to get the drop on people with our 600 RPM, it can allow us to have a much stickier ADS on our target, so generally it's great overall. Left over, we have Pulse Monitor and Great Robber. Both are good, but really isn't for this weapon or weapon type at all. So now the conclusion. So we have gone over the overall perks to look out for. So here's the overall conclusion as to what you should be aiming for. Masterwork, you want a stability or range of plus 10. Mods are anything except from the counter balance mod. Scopes, SPO26, SPO28 or SLO post 10. Column 2, you want ricochet rounds or high caliber rounds. Column 3, under pressure or dynamic sway reduction. Column 4, kill clip or rampage. As the Gilar 42 has quite flexible stats out of the package, we only really need to focus on controlling its recoil kick, range, and overall damage for us to be able to compete in PvP. For PvE, this isn't much of the case as we can be more adventurous in terms of what perks we choose and pick, but nonetheless, whatever perks you pick for PvP will benefit the weapon in PvE as well. The final god roll perks to pick cover the needed areas for weapon to at least have a chance at competing with today's meta, with all of them having positive synchronizations one way or another. You won't always have the chance to start and finish fights as the weapon's impact is very low and requires you to hit a number of shots for you to have a potential kill, but if we have something like kill clip or rampage active, then getting the first kill is really all we need for a fair chance at defeating others. Plus, having 44 in the magazine with Rampage 3 active is quite a beautiful sight to use, and is, honestly, it really does work when it needs to work. Overall, I do hope this gives you an idea as to how well the weapon performs as it plays quite nice with the right set of perks, and as you can see from the clips, firing 44 rounds of pure kinetic rounds at an oncoming group of players is, well, well, you can tell from the video itself, very chaotic. So that comes to the end of the weapon review video and god roll episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. 
Now, if you enjoy the content, then please do leave a like, a sub, and also do press that little bell button right there to always stay updated to when I upload. As well, I appreciate a lot if you do. I also do recommend if you do have any recommendations of any weapons you'd like me to go over, or any type of certain perks and canalizations you'd like me to go over, please by all means leave a comment in the comment section and I'll definitely look into it. But like always, thanks for watching Guardians, and I hope to see you all again quite soon.